Welcome to the next installment of my video lecture series for international economics. And in this particular video lecture, I'm going to be taking a look at comparative advantage with many goods, and particularly going over the importance of relative wages in determining the allocation of good production in the world economy. Specifically, this relates to the Ricardian model, which we are previously reviewing. Make sure you realize that, that when we're talking about the Ricardian model, that the pattern of trade only depends on the ratio of home to foreign wages. Now, this is going to change slightly as we move towards uh, additional chapters or further chapters where we're going to look at uh, more complex models of the patterns of trade and production in the world. But in the Ricardian model, all we're going to be really concerned with is people, the wage rates, the relative wages in the countries, and the relative productivity of workers in the particular countries. So as you remember, we use W to distinguish what wages are. So W is the wage in the home country, and W asterisk is the wage in the foreign country. So uh, dividing uh, W by W asterisk, we get the home slash foreign wage ratio. And a, a very simplistic rule for realizing or determining where goods are going to be produced, they're always going to be produced where they are the cheapest to produce. So if it's cheaper to produce a good in the United States relative to, let's say, Mexico, it'll be produced in the United States and it will be traded or uh, exported to Mexico. On the other hand, if it's cheaper to produce in Mexico, it will be produced in Mexico and exported to the United States. So that's a very straightforward rule of thumb to keep in mind uh, when we're taking a look at this. So how do we actually determine what the costs are? Well, costs are just going to be equal to the wage rate multiplied by the unit labor requirement for that particular good that's being produced. So we have that sub I, so this is good, you know, one, good two, good three. So this, this lowercase I or the subscripted I is just showing the unit labor requirement for each item that could be produced in that country. So if we want to know what the cost is going to be in a home country, we multiply by the wage rate, the wage rate by the unit labor requirement for that particular good. And we do the same thing for a foreign country. We take the wage rate of the foreign country and multiply by the unit labor requirement. In order to have production and home, that the per unit cost of producing that particular item has to be the less than it is in the foreign countries. As we said in the previous slide, goods are always going to be produced where they are the cheapest to produce. So here, when this occurs, it's cheaper to produce at home than in the foreign country. That can be rewritten in the following fashion, that if you take the unit labor requirement for a particular good in a foreign country and divide by the unit labor requirement in the home country, if that is greater than the wage rate ratio, the wages in the home country divided by the foreign country, home production will occur. So that's a good rule of thumb to remember. Conversely, we could write the same thing for foreign production. It's just that, that unit, the ratio of the unit labor requirements has to be less than the wage rate ratios. Now, I know some of you are looking at this and looking at some of these equations and wondering what does this actually mean. So I, what I'm going to do is actually give you a numeric example, and I'm going to take something directly from the textbook to review this. So here we're going to be taking a look at the home and foreign labor requirements. So we're going to have a column for particular goods. We're going to have a column for the unit labor requirement for the home country, the unit labor requirement in the foreign country, and then we're going to calculate the relative home productivity advantage. So we're just measuring how more productive uh, labor is in the home country relative to the foreign country for a particular good. So here we have apples, and in the home country, the unit labor requirement is equal to 1, while in the foreign country, it's equal to 10. That information tells us that workers are 10 times more productive at the, in the home country for the production of apples than they are in the foreign country. For bananas, the unit labor requirement is equal to 5 in the home country, while it's equal to 40 in the foreign country, the unit labor requirement for the foreign country. So Home workers are eight times more productive than foreign workers when it comes to producing bananas. For caviar, the home unit labor requirement is equal to three, and the foreign unit labor requirement is equal to 12. So that tells us that 
home workers are four times more productive in the production of caviar, and then we can fill in the same information for dates and enchiladas here. So now we have the relative home productive advantage, uh, you know, comparing the productivity, relative productivity of home versus foreign workers for these different sectors of apples, bananas, caviar, dates, and enchiladas. The other piece of information we need to have is what is the wage rate ratio? What's the ratio of wages between the home country and the foreign country? So let's make an assumption here that the wage rate is nine times higher than the wage rate in the foreign country. So if we use that rule of thumb, home production will occur when the relative home productivity advantage is greater than the wage rate. So for any of these goods where this column is greater than this wage rate ratio, it will be produced at home. And conveniently, we've put these in descending order. So here, the relative home productivity advantage is equal to 10, which is greater than the relative wage rates between the two countries. So apples would be produced in the home country. But as we continue downward, that no longer holds. Now the wage rate ratio is greater than the relative home productivity advantage. So for bananas, caviar, dates, and enchiladas, they all will be produced in the foreign country. So given these relative productivities across these sectors and the wage rate ratios of a uh, wage rate ratio of nine, apples is the only thing that's going to be produced in the home country. And bananas, caviar, dates, and enchiladas will all be produced in the foreign country. Let's do this again for a different wage rate ratio. Let's say that the wage rate ratio of home to foreign is now equal to seven. Remember the rule of thumb was that the relative home productivity advantage, if that is greater than the wage rate ratio, production will occur in the home country. So as we move down, we see that 10 is greater than seven, so apples will be produced in the home country. Eight is greater than seven, so bananas will be produced in the home country. But after that, that no longer holds. So now the uh, relative uh, uh, th th that the rest of these items will be produced in the foreign country. Excuse me for uh, stammering there. So let's go through that again. So now that we have that the relative home productivity uh, productivity advantage is greater than the rate wage rate. Those two items, apples and bananas, are going to be produced in the home country. The remaining items, caviar, dates, and enchiladas, will be produced in the foreign country. Let me do that example one more time with another different wage ratio here. The wage ratio is three. So it's three. the wages are three times higher in the home country than the foreign country. The rule of thumb that we used was that if the relative home productivity advantage is greater than the wage rate ratio, it will be produced in the home country. So 10 is greater than three. So apples would be produced in the home country. Eight is greater than four. So that bananas will be produced in the home country. And four is greater than three, so caviar will be produced in the home country. For the remaining items, dates and enchiladas, they will be produced in the foreign country. So make sure you're comfortable with that. Uh, it's going to be important for you to be able to understand why comparing uh, labor productivity, relative labor productivity, and the relative wage rates across countries help us predict where goods are actually produced.